Yeah, just kind of like, here we're at. This is what we have. This is what we're waiting for. Uh, this year we're looking at Tim Burton's movie, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. I'm Scott. I'm Joe. Uh, so, you know, let's get started. Joe, This you say this is your favorite movie, right? Uh, pretty much. It's, it, it, there's a few that are right up there, but this is the one that I can keep going back to multiple times and watch over and over and over again. Yeah. I like that Pee-wee gets a credit, like the character, like as if he's a real person. Yeah, it's, it's not... It's not Paul Rubens. It's P.W. P. Herman. Yeah. Oh, no. You ruined the magic for everybody. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, this movie didn't come out in 1985. Yeah. Is it that all? I was going to ask if you remembered the year offhand. Yeah. It's 1985. It's uh, Tim Burton's first, like, major movie. Uh, yeah, I think it's his, like, theatrical, uh, like, cinematic debut. Yeah. I know he worked at Disney for a while as, like, an animator or storyboarder. Um, I know he made some short films, like I think Frank and Winnie's like technically his first film. Yeah, it's his first big like. Well, this is his first like th- like wide theatrical release. Yeah. I'm curious, um, like how this movie, like how that came to be, you know, like what was the Pee Wee Herman franchise like before this movie? Because I remember Pee Wee's Playhouse as a kid, but I'm pretty sure that came after this, right? That came after it. Um, it was definitely. Like, uh, there was a stage show that they put together, you know, Paul and uh, Phil Hartman, who makes a cameo in the movie. Um, mm-hmm. They work together, on, like, I think in Second City in Chicago. Or no, Groundlings. Groundlings. I'm looking at it now. Um, but they had, like, a, a stage show. So there's an old HBO, like, stage show version of the Pee Wee Herman show. Uh, which then later became like almost like the new uh, Broadway show that they did. It was kind of a play on that. Uh, I remember seeing that as a child on HBO and it's not good to see as a child. Yeah. So it kind of explains a lot of things going forward for me. So. Yeah. I, 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 I can't remember the first time I saw this movie. I remember watching Pee Wee's Playhouse. Like you said, this came out in 85. I was born at the end of 1985. Um, but I think I've only ever seen this like in bits and pieces growing up. And then I can't remember the first time I've seen it all the way through. I've you know, obviously now seen it several times. I think the last time I've seen it, though, was when uh, we did the retro movie nights at you know, our local movie theater. Yeah. Um, so that's been a couple of years. Um, but I remember very vividly like the bike shop when I was a kid had like for over a decade after this movie came out because it was like well into the 90s like they had like a have you seen this bike like wanted poster for peewee's bike and i think i got a schwinn there because of that poster that makes sense yeah i think that might have been the first time i found out about this movie because i think we rented it from like the local like video store um you know after i'd seen it there so i'm being like oh there's a movie you know like going back and watching like you can go back and watch this and it like works as a surreal comedy i think oh there's godzilla in the background uh you know we just talked about that on an earlier episode of the show um there's mr potato head so yeah, there's a bunch a... of troll dolls yeah. yeah there's mickey mouse there's gumby gumby got his house some, some sort of stuffed ostrich i remember being confused that this wasn't like the playhouse you know yeah well, you think about it. You look at this. You have this house. Yeah. Then you have the playhouse. And then if you watch the Netflix one, his house is completely different too. So it's like, can we just, you know, lives in multiple different houses? He just, it's just like a the continuity and the, the show's not, this stuff's not really particularly realistic. Yeah. Um, but you guess you can kind of see like the beginnings, like Tim Burton's like style here. Oh, yeah. It's one of those movies, like it's a Tim Burton movie, but you don't really think about it having like his, like his stamp on it. But there's definitely scenes in this that, uh, more so than others, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially later for me, especially later in the movie, like with a uh, large Marge. And, I was thinking like uh, the the dream sequence. The dream sequences for sure. The, the the way the color is and the aesthetic, it screams like you look at it and you go, oh, I see Beetlejuice and you see all those kind of things. So it's like. It's just crazy. And then, you know, this also is their, the connection with Tim Burton and um, Danny Elfman. Yeah. 
like you don't think of that so there's yeah. there's so much to this movie that it's just like i know everyone likes to talk about how great like i don't want to say this is like the forgotten tim burton movie but i think because it's 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 not as over the top as like a lot of uh tim burton stuff kind of is it's, it's easier to forget about this versus like batman and beetlejuice right and it's not like a horrible remake like his new stuff right yeah because like after this i'm looking at his uh, filmography after this he went beetlejuice batman edward scissorhands batman returns it's like after this it just all kind of yeah like those are all like the things i think of when i think tim burton's like stuff, yeah you know? it's just nuts it's crazy how many like this was such a trope in the 80s like this overly complicated like breakfast gadget yeah because like back to the future starts with one maybe it's just the two and i just remember way more remember these things being way more but i might have also just i think i just wore out like every copy of back to the future well then the back to the future come out in 85 i think it might have came out and i think it came out 80 six and took place in 85 uh, i'd have to talk to harry about that he would know offhand i should know offhand um but if that's the case and then it's it's a 1985 thing maybe the way of the future yeah oh, good old mr t cereal i know as i've never actually ever seen that ever like outside of like commercials and uh you know obviously this right now i kind of remember it but i also like i what i remember of it it's that it falls in that vein of um, the other Tim Burton movie, Batman. Batman cereal kind of had the same taste as Mr. T cereal. Oh, I think a lot of these like licensed cereals of the time were just literally the same thing. They would just change the box. Right. It's like that, uh, you know, the Zelda Mario. Like they, they all had that kind of like. Yeah, they all like, yeah, just generic cereal. Like, like the Zelda and Mario ones had like. Um, like a berry flavor yes yeah yeah if i remember correctly yeah this was more i think this was mr t and batman i want to say tasted a lot like captain crunch but not as uh rough on the mouth if that makes sense yeah i know what you mean like they have like this texture it's yeah, that and it was, like, yeah. It, it leaves that film in your mouth was weird, mr t was like a uh Oh man, oh, this whole front yard is so problematic now. Oh uh, yeah, a few of them are, yeah. Yeah. Um uh it's weird that Mr. Mr. T they're trying to make into like a children's like character. Yeah. Cause like what was he known for? Like the 18, this like violent adult show. Yeah. Did they ever sell this thing? I feel like I, should, I feel like they should have. I think they did, but I don't think it was as crazy as uh that i don't think it like sprayed as nutty but i think it was more less of like of a like a actual sprinkler but more of like a kid's play sprinkler yeah i was gonna say because i would like love to have that thing in the summer even as you know now oh yeah oh there's so many things in movies and tv that i see that i wish i had like don't you have that santa or not that santa that snowman uh no but i like for me I mean, my thing that I, the stuff I really want isn't, I mean, I would love that bike, but. Um, oh, that would, I mean, it's such a, it is a cool bike. Yeah. But like stuff like that, like in the 60s Batman, I want like, you know, the Shakespeare head and uh, a red blinking phone. Yeah. I have no use for them, but I want them. No, I know what you mean. I mean, like, they at least make that stuff. You can buy them. Yeah. I've, I've thought about them, but then like the Shakespeare head's like. 100 plus bucks i'm like nah, i don't want it that bad yeah, they, they redid stuff with that where it's like it's like a plastic mold and it's like a bank yeah you can get it a bit cheaper because everything i want ends up being a bank i want a nice big steak puff marshmallow man well it's a bank yeah i mean that makes sense because it keeps it hollow and like you know so it keeps costs down yeah yeah i shocked if they never made like this available for purchase I think they did. I think they were. I, I think they did too, but I have no like anecdotal evidence of that ever existing. I like even with the sound off, I can hear just every one, little part. 
just one of those movies that's tattooed in your brain oh so much so. i last time i saw it was around my birthday in august so oh, here's your I favorite also love character. this little part like the whole like he just has a bunch of horses it's just the the, the craziness of this whole like aesthetic is awesome to me i mean as, as a kid seeing that it's just like wow I is love weird is, stuff. Is Pee Wee supposed to be an adult or like essentially a child? I don't know. Like, I think he blends with that kind of like. I mean, especially here, you don't know what he does. He just yeah. kind of like has a bike, he goes to a magic shop, and then he obviously he doesn't have a job because he, uh, you know, goes looking for his bike and just leaves. And but this is like such a childhood like exchange like the whole him and francis being his bully yeah. and like this is obviously like the life that a child would like live with all of these like toys and like nonsense everywhere yeah i guess they're trying to play him as like a man child but like i mean especially when you go like you know he steals the bike they go to his house you know the buxtons they're not thieves but like he's so he's got his dad. And I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. But as a kid seeing this for the first time, like, you know, it's, yeah. it has all the aesthetics of something you would want. Like you would want your house to be as crazy as that and have a wouldn't want a fire pole in the middle of their house to go downstairs. I mean, I still want a fire pole. The trouble is, you know, you have to, you know, go back up. Well, yeah. But you know, it's not about that. It's about going, the the pole going down. It's all the fun stuff. It's just like I don't know. There's all sorts of little things in this movie that as a kid I thought were cool and then as an adult I'm watching it and it's just like holy cow like yeah. It I just want to say like between like this and Ghostbusters and Batman I thought I would be writing down like more fire poles in my lifetime. <laughs> I've never done it once. I think I did it once or twice cuz uh not in a building but you know growing up you know the playgrounds had them as a as a way to go down off of a off the playground. I think I did it once or twice, mm-hmm. and then I realized anytime you're in a playground, it's in the summer and metal gets really hot. Yeah. So I didn't do it that often. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Such a weird. Like this movie has all these spots like here where it just it all just flows really well together yeah um like it just has a a natural like you get sucked into it and you can just watch it and it just kind of time moves more quickly than you realize the next thing you know you're an hour into the movie and you're at the alamo <laughs> and you're sorry that part always makes me laugh okay um yeah, I think we're coming up to the part with Dottie, right? Yes. Because that's got the best line in the movie. Oh, I don't know. I got my favorite line in the movie. I will make sure we point them out. Oh, God, that clown thing's so creepy. Yeah, this is the part that in the... Uh, yeah, the, the laser disc, the open mat. Yeah, you can see the chain just keep going. Yeah, because it's just on a loop. Yeah. Because you can see them, the like the open mat like doesn't have the widescreen stuff, so you can just see the bottom. Yeah, just going over and over again. Yeah, That's you know, great little, little gag. things that make movie magic. Yeah, and I saw the cartoon cavalcade being on the uh, matinee behind him. Is right. that like going to be a reference to? Uh, you know, is that some is, is the thing in uh, Playhouse a reference to that? Then it might be. I think everything in like these types of movies in this movie. It has something somewhere. I was loving this mad the magic shop. Yeah. Uh the name, which would be reversed because it's on the outside showing. Mm-hmm. You can read it. Oh, so yeah. on the outside it would be backwards. Mario's magic shop, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to read Mario on the inside. You'd have to Oh wow, that's not a great thing to have in the foreground. Yeah. <laughs> There's little things. Yeah. Like school feeling. Not, not everything always ages well, you know. No, no, there are certain parts of everything that kind of like, ooh. 
I thought that mask was Batman for a second. I was like, oh, I got all this foreshadowing. I'm trying to think of screen grabs for the the, the YouTube version of the commentary. I'm thinking of using that with the, the glasses. Oh, it's a classic cut. Yeah. I know it's usually your uh, Facebook profile picture every once in a while. Yeah. So like some of these things, like, so this is a magic shop, right? Yeah. Some of these things are just like a costume. Like, yeah. Or like, I mean, almost every one of these things is like a mask. Like everything in the back background rather like what's a shrunken head what kind of magic trick is that regular size and how did peewee not see that five seconds ago that's what i want to know yeah he was right over there headlight glasses yeah oh my gosh and direct from australia the boomerang bow tie In the deleted scenes of this movie, they do have a scene with the boomerang bow tie. Yeah, I was gonna say because that stuff feels like you know it's set up for like it's essentially like his uh his James Bond like gadgets. Yeah, like you know I think they would help out in the big adventure. He uses everything but the boomerang bow tie. Ah, it's Chuck's bike orama. Yeah, I'm trying to like you know when I watch like movies like this now, I'm always trying to look for like uh, details and stuff in the background. I'm still kind of hoping that the uh, there'd be more like fun names in the shops, but I'm not really seeing that. Ch stuff. Chuck's Bike Orama is my favorite. Yeah, so I sold something for thirty three sixty. We can always talk about Donnie. Yeah, who's that actress? I feel like she was in everything at this time. But but she was E.G. Daly is her name. She was in, um, let's see, I'm looking at films that she would pop out. She was in Valley Girl uh, right before this. She was a singer in Better Off Dead. But she is more known as a uh, voice actor. Now, what's she done? She was Tommy Pickles in Rugrats. Okay. Uh, she was Buttercup in the Powerpuff Girls. So, uh, I was doing that stuff, you know, was well after this, you know, 90s yeah. and like early 2000s. But yeah, this is like this and Valley Girl, and she was in a couple other things. So, like, Tommy Pickles. Oh, Pee Wee, the, the ace icon that he is. I like, I like you. Here I wanted is. my brother to have this quoting in his uh as a senior quote but he didn't pick it yeah this, this these are the best lines. things you shouldn't understand yeah. and my favorite is her response is i don't understand i love that little part it's like yeah. that's exactly it Notre Dottie, a rebel that's my uh, brother's senior quote you don't want to get mixed up with a guy like me Dottie. i'm alone a rebel. um Oh, man, this is going to date this this commentary a little bit, but I got a, a wedding in a couple of uh, months. Not that I'm getting married, but I'm officiating one and I need to write the ceremony. I kind of want to like maybe steal some of that about, you know, things you can't understand, things you shouldn't understand. Things you wouldn't understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got to see, though. I need to make sure everything's cool with the, the bride and groom. But no, now it's going to be inciting it. Oh god, it's the worst. My favorite line's coming up. Okay. I thought yours might be much later in the movie. No, my favorite line's so so subtle. Mm. Also, the door says Murray's and it's Chuck's by Garama, so hmm. yeah. I guess this was a, you know an actual like place yeah. recorded at called Murray's. That like comes my favorite line. Out, yeah. You're the owner. Oh yes, that's me. They call me Chuck. And then he goes right to a serious face. <laughs> that's my yeah. favorite part. Because it's like, oh, yes, that's me. They call me Chuck. And then right to serious. I don't know why. I just love it. It's like uh, in Ghostbusters, the whoa, somebody's coming. That's like my favorite part of the whole uh, movie. No reason. I just love it. I mean, that movie's like almost written entirely by quotable lines. We'll, we'll eventually talk about that in more in depth. 
uh, on the show at some point. Say so that oh, guy yeah. just drove by, looks kind of like Harold Ramis. Um, oh man, all these cool people with their bikes, just rubbing it in. I mean, I'm assuming this was shot like in LA. You know, there's palm trees and. Mm. Yeah, I think that's um. Did this all this open air like shopping mall basically like looks very like that. Oh yeah, well most of it's shot. Yeah, it was later in the movie. They're at the, they're on like the way towards like a Joshua Tree and all that kind of stuff. But the did they ever like, mention like where this town's supposed to be? Like, does it have a name? It's not, I don't like, think cool they ever really like say where it is, but it's like, like you said, it's clearly yeah. It's clearly like West Coast. Yeah, but like I know that this movie is like kind of you know like I was about to say globe trotting, but it's really like a movie across America. So you know, obviously they very famously go to Texas, right? Um, which has some of the best bits in the whole movie. It's a very Tim Burton feel right here. Yeah, right here. Yeah, it's a pretty Tim Burton look. A low angle pushing with the spinning weird surreal bikes in the background, shadowing and lights. Yeah. yeah. Like you see, what makes you think believe the Russians are involved? I mean, it was the eighties, everything was the Russians. Yeah. Eighty five, the wall was still up. Yeah. I remember when it came down, I was very little. I didn't really like understand what the big deal was. I remember it too. Yeah. So uh so our current geopolitical situation with Russia. Uh let's get into this now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, doing all this build up in the Arctic, uh, military yeah. build up. So they're going to try to control these new global warming trade routes. And now that the mineral resources are going to be easier to get at. Oh, yeah. Pee Wee Herman. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pee Wee. It's ahead of its time. Uh, oh, yeah. here Here's a cameo. Yeah, we're trying to have a bet off camera. If we could, uh, who could guess the most cameos, uh, get the number right. I, I, I think I'm going to be way off. Um, it's odd, odd job. Yeah, I'd say it's odd job, right? Whatever his real name is. Yeah. Oh, really? Where are they hosing them down? <sighs> I do quote this movie a lot. Yeah. Like, in without thinking of it, like in a few minutes, they get upstairs and he goes, yeah. go ahead and scream your head off for miles from where anyone can hear you. Definitely use that multiple times. I was going to say, like, I want to say, you know, this movie is a classic, but like, I don't think it's remembered as a classic as much as a lot of other movies from the 80s. But I also don't want to say it's like a cult or underground thing. It definitely teeters the line of that, like you said, like the cult underground hit, but also like mainstream enough. I think just because Pee Wee was such a, a big to do, I think what hurts it is uh, the sequel. Um, the big happy we yeah because it was so just different i'll be honest with good. you i never saw big top peewee but its reputation is bad yeah it involves a talking pig at some point and i mean francis uh, <laughs> no like uh it's just it's not good i did not like it at all so but then again you know i was kidding i like this and i liked you know, Pee Wee's Playhouse and the surreal nature of it in that yeah, sense. This giant bathtub is so awesome. I mean, I know it's essentially an indoor pool, but I like that it's positioned like that. Like, look at the, the faucets and stuff are huge. Yeah. Yeah. Like, scaled up. But yeah, like, they both, like, are kind of treated it, like, if you were to just read this as a script, these two characters would be, like, children. But right. they're play, but you know they're played by like full grown men and I don't know if that's like that in and of itself is like the intentional joke because that's kind of funny in its own way too. Yeah, I th I think that I I want to say it is. It's just I mean that's how we're like it seems you know just you do believe me right, Dad? Like yeah. it's so like you know the rich bully kid picking on the goofy kid who wears a bow tie all the time and yeah they've been working on a birthday <laughs> train set all day i mean we all knew kids like that yeah away with everything they're the worst 
I'm gonna try and give them trick gum. Spearmint or fruit? Uh, who, who would choose spearmint over fruit? Also, who would take someone's gum that was just in a swimming pool? Yeah. <laughs> After having an argument and like he tried turning to... away, getting calling the police. Would you yeah. like some gum? Oh well, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Uh, fruit, please. Yeah, exactly. Boy, I could really go for a swim in some gum right now. Oh God. Yeah, my bike shop had something like that up. It had like pictures of Pee Wee Herman and the bike. I think it's something that the owner must have just made. Well, it's the most like, I mean, there's other movies involving bikes, but it's not like, you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I can't imagine one, like, I guess E.T. that I would like try to like put some marketing around, like that would be fun for kids. Yeah, I'm, there was one. I wouldn't do Stand By Me. Um, no. Broke over the money. Bucks ton. But I mean, like, I'm trying to think of what the name of that movie was. What there happened? was a movie with one of the... Uh, the... Oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But no, this would be like the quintessential kind of bike adventure movie. Yeah. Even though there's not a bike in it. For a large part of the movie. I mean, the bike's the whole reason the plot exists. Like, oh my god, there it is. Um, <laughs> it's this weird, like, murder room that they're in. Ah, um, <laughs> oh, what a house. I also like that every single person rode a bike there. Oh, yeah, it's like the whole bike community is coming out. Like, you know, in fact, you know, it's like the QAnon thing where one goes all, one goes one, or whatever the stupid saying yeah. they have is. You know. It's a support, this is a supportive community of bicyclists, of bike curious people. What a smorgasbord of people. Yeah. Man, shows it's a, you know, a universal hobby. Uh, I love that he has all these like pictures of his bike, him and his bike. He's got the picture of just him. Yeah. Another Looking photograph. like upset. I, I it might be it would be funny if it was a more obvious still from earlier in the movie. Yeah, like, that'd be a good fourth wall thing. I think that's something they would do in like the Muppets. There was a classic line I think most people remember. Is there yeah. something you'd like to share with the rest of us, amazing Larry? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And that him, amazing Larry, is also in a. Uh, deleted scene where he's in the magic shop and he shows his trick and his trick is I guess he wears a toupee and he can get the toupee to rise on the top of his head mm -hmm. and spin and PB kind of like convinces him that maybe a different hairstyle would make is the that, trick look better is that why he's got the mohawk now so that's why he's got the mohawk oh because I always just assumed you know this is a wacky world that's a wacky hairstyle yeah I mean it makes it better it's like knowing now, it's like, oh, okay. But like not having any idea that that was a thing. I think it makes it funnier. Yeah. It's just that quick, who is Amazing Larry? Why yeah. don't I know who that is? It's why you like, you know, you, you sticks in your brain more because you have to fill in some gaps. Oh, yeah. I like that, you know, he has this, you know, model of them all. He's even did it even better than Doc Brown because, you know, it's built to scale and, color, you know, painted. Yeah. I also like that his bike got stolen like earlier in the day and he's mm -hmm. already whipped up a whole model of them all. <laughs> but the guy Amazing Larry's in, that actor's in something else. And it's driving me crazy. I can't remember what I've, I know him from or like know. what I'm recognizing him from. He's not <laughs> the bum in UHF, is he? No. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. But it's something like that. I gotta look it up. Or people can leave us in the comments. Yeah. If, um, if you know, yeah. Leave a comment. Mm -hmm. 
yeah wow there's we're like a third of the way into the movie and he still hasn't left yet i remember i kind of remember him going uh on his adventure his big adventure much quicker than this i guess maybe that's just because that's where like in my opinion all the most memorable stuff is oh yeah not that this you know the lead up is has been is, is bad or anything i wonder if it got into that quicker you know we're talking about like why this isn't as remembered as a classic I, I mean i know it's remembered fondly right but you know it came out like you know the same time period as like ghostbusters and back to the future and like you know tim burton's other movies from the 80s beetlejuice and batman and stuff like are, are i think are usually part of the discussion more right i mean that at that time period i think it's just there were so many so many movies that it could you know like people would remember but not everything can get like but again it's i think it's to each person i i you yeah. know some people prefer peewee than say you know i guess maybe part of it is is like it's not as merchandisable like we still get lots of like you know ghostbusters like just keep using ghostbusters and back to the future as, as touch points like we get constant merchandise from them but like you know why don't we get like bike toys and I don't know. I'd want a large Marge doll, wouldn't you? One oh that you God. squeeze and then makes the face. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't have yeah, you can't really merchandise this movie per se. Now, you know, I think Playhouse came out. Playhouse has lots of things you can merchandise and they, they have and do. Yeah. Because they still make like, you know, like cherry dolls and stuff. Yeah, that the the movie or the TV show came out like a year or so later yeah i don't i don't think it was much after this so like and that you know all the characters in the playhouse like you said you can have a cherry you can have globy you can have these toys and zombies and stuff like that yeah to make it something but uh yeah i wonder if i wonder if maybe like not that this movie's forgotten but i wonder if the success of peewee's playhouse just kind of like dominates people's peewee memory Oh, absolutely. Yeah, maybe that's you know more what it is, but um, absolutely because I especially in like our our general age group. I mean, this movie came out in eighty five. You know, most people remember you know Pee Wee's Playhouse because it was you know eighty six, eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty nine that era. We were a little older, so you know, you're not going to the movies for stuff. Yeah. And they weren't. It's not like how it is now, where you have like we're watching this on a streaming site. There wasn't that like you had it on cable or or you got lucky and was able to get the VHS. Yeah, that's it, and it didn't come on that often. But you know, Pee Wee's Playhouse was on every Saturday morning. Yeah. All right, now he's on the Big Adventure. And there he goes. When I was a kid, I also thought you know bindles and stuff were going to be a bigger part of my life too. <laughs> Would you stop and pick this guy up if you didn't know who he was? I mean, it's got nice white shoes. He's wearing a bow tie. I was questioning why a man in a suit was just, you know, needing to hitchhike to Texas. I guess because he works on that kid logic. Yeah. You know, I'm wondering, like, all right, so we're never going to have this perspective, but like, obviously, it works as an adult, for, as us as adults, but I think it's because we're already familiar with the character. Like, if you could erase all Pee Wee knowledge from your brain and just watch this movie, do you think you would have the same reaction to it? That's a great question. Um, I, I do think it's an, it's at least an interesting movie, especially right. knowing like Tim Burton and like its place in like his history, you know? Right. Oh my God. Who is this guy? What is he in? Oh, it's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> I was, I'm feel like I'm doing that in every scene. Oh, it definitely. I mean, that's what this movie. That's what like that's the best part of watching. Like, not that this is an old old movie, mm -hmm. but like an older movie. You see all these characters and then people that played like, you know, smaller roles per se. Yeah, this is a very like character actor movie. Yeah, and then later you're like, oh my gosh, he was in such and such. Yeah, you're like oh wow. I'm gonna look it up for you. Uh, yeah, I guess this is like more of a modestly budgeted thing. I mean, I I'm just 
guessing. I actually have no idea what the budget for this is. But, you know, it's not, like, nearly as heavy on, like, effects and, you know, like, other things. It's mostly just Paul Ru- the Paul Rubens show, you know? Oh, yeah. Which, to be fair, it's a Pee Wee Herman movie. Like, so how many movies have they had? Like, I can only remember three. They're this one, Big Top, and then the recent Netflix movie. Yeah. It was, like, what, like, six years ago? Yeah. And I, I think they're doing, like, a... Where did I see? I think they're doing like another. There's like another film coming out about Pee Wee Herman. Was like about Pee Wee Herman, or is it like a Pee Wee Herman movie? You know, I think it's like about Pee Wee Herman. I think it's like um, like a documentary. Yeah. Where was that? That might be interesting to watch. Like looking into like the character and like the creation of the character, and like his enduring legacy. Yeah, here it is. That's fine. It's actually supposed to be on the streaming site. I think I'm waiting. Da, da, da. Let me look. Yeah, they're in a production, a two-part documentary, documentary of the life of Paul Rubens, the man behind Pee Wee Herman. So it's going to be about Paul Rubens, and uh, you know, it'll have his early stuff, and then obviously it'll go to post this where. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, I mean, Paul Rubin is still with us, right? Yeah, he's still alive. Yeah, that's what I thought. He's still alive. I had a small chance of, he was at one of like the local conventions a few years ago that I tried to go to, but the place was too packed, so I couldn't go in. It was very upsetting. Oh, that stinks. Yeah, I guess that'd be kind of like when I met Adam West and Barrett Ward for you. Yeah, it's Although, just one of those, like, it would have been, it's actually one of those I, I wanted to go, but I didn't want to actually spend the money to like get a signature or a picture. Yeah. But uh, do you think do you, if you got the chance to meet him, what would you what would you say? Oh, I don't know. I you know. Would you ask him if you've seen any good movies lately? <laughs> uh, I don't know. What I, I think say. if I wanted to be a jerk, that's what I would say. I wouldn't want to be a jerk though. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what he got in trouble for? I mean, that was also like over 20 years ago yeah i mean what he got in trouble for it was you know the things people would do in said the movie theaters so yeah but uh no i don't know i would you know so much of my young life was uh memories about seeing this movie and Wee's playhouse and that hbo special i mean that hbo special uh, stuck in my brain i mean to the point where I was like, wow, I really want to, like, I really like this. And I shouldn't have watched it, but I was allowed to. And, but it also had Phil Hartman in it. And Oh, man, I love Phil Hartman. Yeah. I mean, Phil Hartman helped write this movie with yeah. Paul Rubin. So, like, and I feel bad. Like, I think I talk about Paul Rubin's to, not Paul Rubin's, uh, Phil Hartman to, like, some people I know that are younger than I that don't really know him too much. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're missing out on so much. Oh, his Saturday Night Live run is so good. Oh, it's so good. And then I, even any other stuff he did, you know? Everything he does in The Simpsons is gold. Gold. Uh, I, him and news radio. Like he's the, just he's the best part of Jingle All the Way. Yeah, just his persona and his... His like, like just, deadpan, you know, ridiculous... His, his deadpan ridiculousness. Yes. Because, like, Unfrozen Caveman Lawyer is such a ridiculous thing, but he plays it so sincerely. That's, like, makes it work. Well, speaking of SNL, this is kind of like a Toontz's gag right here. Pretty much. Oh, God, we're so old. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) For those listening and watching, uh, feel free to look up Toontz's, the cat. Yeah, watch stuff on YouTube. It's pretty hilarious. Um, And, and, And feel free to look at uh plenty of phil hartman stuff because you will not be disappointed yeah i don't think he's any, done anything that's really that bad at least since saturday night live he's done lesser works in it but uh you know he was one of my favorite he was one of my favorite comedians you know he just had that <laughs> yeah oh me it's troy mcclure it's coming back deja vu yeah 
Arriva Derchi, baby. I kind of wish all of like the friends Pee Wee made along the way like came back and like factored into the climax. Well, they they show up at the end, but so it's, it's sort of like this like low key like Avengers type of thing. <sighs> Well, yeah, they all show up and assembling a team. Just show up, have like glasses. What I like in the, uh, well, in this movie, there's a lot of little like uh, people that are on like uh, the Playhouse show, uh, but there's also in like other Pee Wee things they tie back to characters as well. So like in the the newest. The big holiday one or big vacation or whatever it's called. Yeah. I think it's a big holiday. I like, don't remember. Miss Yvonne is in it, but she's yeah. playing like a isn't she playing like a like a pilot or something? Oh, Miss Yvonne is the the lady at the snake house. She's okay. also Charlie's mom on It's Always Sunny. I never that's put Miss, that together that that's, that's Miss Yvonne. Simone is the person that's driving the car and then it flies. Okay. That's That's Simone. Here's the most, I I would argue the most memorable part of the movie. Uh, Yes. I would. This is the part I always remembered like existing, like having seen, even though I I didn't remember the rest of the movie when I was like, you know, little, you kind of get like those vague memories, like certain things stick out to you. Oh yeah. Holy smokes. Large Marge is so memorable. I uh, I have a keychain with Large Marge, but uh, my favorite thing with Large Marge is I was uh, just driving in our friend Sean's car mm-hmm. back when we were like 18, 19 years old, driving around just like you do as a 18, 19 year old kid with nothing to do. Yeah. And I just started quoting this whole entire part, just out of nowhere, the middle of the woods. Oh, it's great. It actually freaked him out because out of nowhere I just started doing this. Yeah. We weren't talking, we weren't saying anything, and I just word for word quoted it. Oh my god. It looked just like Oh this. god. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah. I mean that's just like as a kid, like you said, that just sticks with you. Cause I mean it's some it's like that, like the Willy Wonka, like a uh, tunnel scene. Mm-hmm. It's like something so messed up, like kind of like out of nowhere. Oh yeah. I mean, granted, this movie's got a lot of weird stuff in it, so I don't think it's as jarring in this as the Willy Wonka one is. Yeah, the the Wonka one just doesn't. It is know, so just because that one comes feel. after like you know the whimsical pure imagination bit. Yeah. Oh man. The dinosaur. Now that's a, that's an actual landmark in uh in California. I forget what it's called. Yeah, it's it's, it's on its way it's down in, near like Joshua Tree and stuff. Yeah, it's like in the Wizard and stuff. Yep. As a kid, I always wanted to go there just because you know dinosaurs. It's in California. Yeah, maybe that's a movie we should talk about at some point too. But other I, than like it's video game stuff, it's like super not anything special. Well, yeah, it had all the Nintendo trappings. Although now that we're talking about it, it's interesting now that it was at you know Universal Studios, like that's where Nintendo's theme park stuff's gonna be. Yeah. You know. It also had a future Spider Man in the movie. Did it? It had a what's his name? Tobey Maguire. Oh yeah, he's the only one that would have been a kid or whatever in that movie. Yeah. I was thinking like Tom Holland was like, really? He's in that? Oh my god. Yeah, Tobey Maguire and Fred Savage, Jenny Lewis, who is a music music person now. So, well, tonight's the anniversary. The worst accident I ever seen. I also feel like it's it's very appropriate that uh, PB would go to this truck side thing and eat a tuna sandwich. Mm-hmm. And a milkshake. I think he gets, I think that's what he gets a tuna fish and milkshake. Oh man, that sounds like a stomachache waiting to happen. <laughs> I'm too old now to like enjoy things. Well, I just don't think I would want like a milkshake and tuna fish, period, ever as a yeah. combo. But as a kid, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, 
but it plays with that whole weird like kid aspect. I mean, this is still a little bit before like the Ninja Turtles cartoon where they put all kinds of weird stuff on pizza. That's true. It's a bit of a non sequitur. I mean, like Bon Jovi's got a restaurant like this where if you can't pay for your meal, like you can just work. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which is pretty cool. So that way you can like you know, feed like underprivileged people. There's a might... tuna platter and a milkshake. Yeah. Mmm. Yummy. Uh, but yeah, like I can't drink milkshakes anymore. You become an adult, sometimes you become lactose intolerant, and that happened to me. Milkshakes I can still do, which is all right. I don't. I can't remember the last time I had a tuna. Anything? Oh, I eat tuna all the time. I, I like to. I like tuna subs from uh, Wawa. Nothing wrong with tuna. I just can't like. It's the only fish I like to eat. Really, all sorts. But I just. Oh man! Everyone wants to get involved with a uh, peewee. It's that bow tie, I'm telling you. Oh. Draws everyone in. I also love that he washes the dishes but never takes his coat off. <laughs> so he's got suds and his arms are all soaking wet. It's just like there's such little weird things and quirks yeah. that make just, like you pick up, you're like, wow, so why don't you you know, this guy's got a beard. Why don't you cosplay him next? I actually thought about doing it at one one uh, <laughs> like one, for one day or Halloween or one yeah free comic day. I thought about it because I actually like it's like all I gotta do is get like tan khakis, white shoes, a red shirt. Mm-hmm. I was like trying to find the hat to match. Like I, I literally was doing all the work. I think the suspenders would be the toughest part, but I know our friend uh, John Deans has a peewee outfit yeah so i was gonna have together, like yeah i bought but this is how much i was in it i already bought like a, i don't have it anymore but i bought like a plastic like bone mm-hmm. to be like the bone that i chase peewee and i was gonna do it like if i did it i was gonna tell john to dress as peewee and then i was just going to chase him around the mall as andy yeah but uh i never got around to it but it's still young and I can still do it. I mean, you know, it's still possible. Yeah. We'd have to confirm with John if he still has his Pee Wee outfit. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if he does. I imagine he does. I don't see why he wouldn't. He's my boyfriend. He gets real jealous. <laughs> oh, no. No, I, I don't think. Well, here you go. Here's another Burton feel. This kind of like, like yeah, this T Rex mouth thing. Yeah, the aesthetic of the colors and the light and. Can you really go in these dinosaurs? Is this like a weird set they had to build? I, I think they built the set for this because if you look, like the mouth isn't that big. Yeah, like, the saying, dinosaur looks... isn't that big to have this kind of look. Mm-hmm. I think you could go in a little, like in the wizard which we were talking about, I think they go in there, but there's not, like, there's not much you can do. Okay. I think it's, it's almost like Lucy the Elephant. Like, I think you can go in it, but it's like, well, here it is. Hey, man, Lucy's the bomb. Yeah. There's but, a museum inside her. Yeah. But there's uh, not, like, more to it than that. Like, this isn't, like, the Statue of Liberty where you can go and sit in the head of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, because this head looks giant yeah look how huge this is yeah Yeah. i'd have to see from the outside again i don't think it's got that many teeth either yeah i got i got a bone it wasn't that big yeah but i was like i could easily do this i would say like even though i was just saying lucy's great just because you know she's great for our local tourism i'm claustrophobic so i I really don't like being inside her oh i can it's i have i haven't done that since i was a kid and i can only imagine how you know, now, now we're there. a lot bigger, you know. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those those guys are still up. I know there's a lot more built around that now. Yeah. But, uh. I mean, I have a couple of, uh, I've been to California a couple times, but I never, you know, been, been here. I don't even know where this is. 
it's just, it's just near somewhere. it's near Joshua Tree, which I think is like south. Yeah, I can't remember. I know my uh, my friend Josh went cross country. Uh, I forget like it was over 10, 15 years ago at this point, but he went down in that area. And while he was there, he took pictures and that's cool. He actually, got me like the di- like a a dinosaur that they had at like the gift shop there. All right, here's the real Tim Burton stuff. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh no. You know, this is another really creepy scene. Yeah. Giant dinosaur eats the bike and then... Or am I thinking something else? Like, I remember there being, like, clowns or doctors or something. Oh, it comes up. Yeah, that's right. It's it part up. of this scene, right? Uh, There's another dream sequence. Okay, that's the one I'm thinking of then. That that's other dream sequence was when he uh, used the biker bar. That one involves oh. the clowns that are running. And there's one clown that's just, while he's running, he's making, like changing his face constantly yeah that really freaks me out too and then it goes into uh, like a devil scene at the same time sardines still sort of dated here I don't know how many uh, people are just Riding traveling by train constantly now that's such like a weirdly romanticized piece of like americana yeah but like not like homeless people just like moving around the country like with nothing like i don't think it would be so whimsical yeah i, I mean I like he's got he's got no teeth so you know they've and he's hiding on a train so you know they've either just fallen out or it's like I don't know yeah I also like that he just magically jumps off the train and whoop oh, there you are <laughs> San, Antonio. San Antonio the Texas Alamo so good never been to Texas I went once. Did you go to the Alamo? No, I was in Houston. Okay. And I definitely constantly yelled, uh, the stars at night are big and bright. Did nobody respond? Oh, no. They all responded. Really? Yeah. I was at like some convention thing, too, so it made it even better. Okay, that makes sense, then. But, man, I loved it. I loved every part of it. Oh, my God. She's in stuff, too. She's in Saturday Night Live. Yeah, I can't remember her name, though. I think it's Shane something. I just had it all open. I'll get it. Yeah, I bet you someone like Phil Hartman knew, I guess. Although, I don't think he was on SNL yet, right? I remember him more being a 90s thing. Dan Hooks. Okay. She was a fellow member of the Groundlings with uh, Rubens Hartman. What else is he, what else is she in? I'm trying to remember her big role that I know her from and I can't I can't place it. She was on Saturday Night Live. She was in uh the final two seasons of Designing Women. Oh, that must be what it is. And she had a recurring role on Third Rock from the Sun. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's Third Rock from the Sun. She dated the French Stewart character. Yeah. Okay, now I remember. That's what I know her from most. But I'm pretty sure I know her from Saturday Night Live too. Yeah. Yeah, on Saturday Night Live, she was doing like a. She did a lot of. It was like that right in the beginning of the Phil Hartman era. She came in. Mm-hmm. Wayne is the yes. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Boy. I... The Alamo is kind of an interesting spot, and like it's weird that it's got like this like built up like historical like and cultural significance. Yeah, because it's really like because I guess it's, it's you know like people banding together and you know standing against an unstoppable foe, but like they were pretty badly slaughtered. Yeah, and like what is ultimately a very insignificant like pointless fight. Oh no.
But yeah, if, if his hometown's like in like Southern California, it might make sense that like he'd get that train there and like be like a day or two later, you know, after traveling. Yeah. And it makes sense with Texas and a train because, yeah. you know, Texas is known for beef and getting beef to, you know, California. Yeah. Or, it, yeah. That's the quickest and most efficient way to get, you know, also it's points. 1985. And yeah. <laughs> trains and buses are the way to go. Yeah. I remember as a kid being confused that she was going to Paris, France, and she was getting on a bus. I was like, how is she getting to Paris on a bus from Texas? That doesn't make sense. She probably needs to get to the East Coast for a, a flight or a boat. Yeah. That, and I, as a kid, I just never put two and two together. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a kid watching the movie. I'm like, oh, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But then, you know, as an adult, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, she's talking about leaving in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I haven't been to the city in years either. I can't remember the last time I went. Yeah, I don't know. I would love, one of the things I've always wanted to do is like travel America and, and you know see all the big historical sites. Like I want to do that more than going to like international. I mean that said if I had a chance to go to like Europe or whatever, I will, but yeah, I mean I've 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 been to France, so I've I've done that. And it's cool and I like it and stuff and it's neat. But like there's so much of you know America to see that I feel like I could, you know. It's just like if you live in Europe, you hear people who go on like holiday for a weekend and they go to like, you know, they live in London and they fly to Spain or and they've been in Spain for a weekend. It's like, it just makes it easier because it's right there. I guess it's like equivalent to going to like another state or something. Right. And we're here in America and it's like, it's like, oh, I've gone to Philadelphia and Baltimore, but I like, you know, I could just buy a plane ticket, fly to, I don't know. There you go. (laughs) Somewhere in the deep heart of Texas. I could fly to Austin, Texas and like, you know. Yeah, we'll be there in like a couple of hours. Yeah, just kind of see the thing and see around and go home. Come home. But like, you know. So I was jealous of my friend being able to do that cross country. He literally went south, hit all those places, and on the way back he came more north and was able to hit like went through Yosemite, he went to Chicago. Yeah. He gets to see all these other spots. It's just like I mean, I've been to a few. I've been to Kansas City, I've been to Houston. You know, there are places that are slightly different, but like, you know. Yeah, I've been to LA and Hollywood. I've been to San Francisco. <clears throat> um, obviously, we where we live, like all the places along the East Coast, yeah, you know, New York, stuff like that. The only other country I've been to, I've been to Canada. I went to Montreal for a little bit oh, when I was a kid. Um, but like, I don't really see much in the middle of the, the country. If you know the world wasn't uh, a, a a fire on fire and we could like travel around, I have a friend that lives in Chicago now, and I really want to go visit them. But yeah, I would love to. I would love to see Chicago. Um, I mean, I've I've been to Denver, and that was really cool and like a great atmosphere to be around. That's like there's so much. So like this this movie to tie it in, like you know, just him traveling and seeing more of the world is just like kind of, I think a dream at this point for a lot of kids in the early 80s you know go around just leave and see the world because some people did but i mean i finally went to like florida for the first time a couple like two years ago you know i went to disney world and or and uh universal for like the first time ever oh my god i didn't realize that guy was so humongous yeah holy smokes i thought it was like some forced camera like forced perspective stuff before jesus I mean, it'd be fun if you guys did that, but like, you're not nearly as tall. Or no, like John's the, the, not nearly short enough for like to have that kind of. Oh my god! So much weird, horrifying imagery in this movie. It's coming out of nowhere. Well, none of the cosplay that I've ever done has ever really 100 percent matched up to the look. But... I mean, you weren't as buff as Fisto. I mean. 
I was fist though after <laughs> everything, so I let myself go a little. Yeah. Is this outfit racist against Texans? <laughs> ah, he's just COVID ready. Yeah. <laughs> Keep wearing a mask. Yeah, all uh, you know, Pee Wee did it, and so the Simpsons predicted stuff. Yeah. Just like the Simpsons predicted everything. <laughs> exactly. Riding volcano. <laughs> just so like it's a great it. bit of physical comedy just everything I mean, about like what they decided to put in this movie it just seems so weird I will be honest this is kind of a brilliant bit like they just established why he needs to cover his face up because I'm that's clearly a stunt double on you know the wide shots yeah but like you know it, it, it's a good way to like cover up who it is you know Oh, he's got a red shirt. Yeah. <laughs> this little jump cut here for the bull. Yeah. <laughs> you can almost, actually see the jump. Yes, yeah, so it almost looks like a real change. Yeah. I love that they didn't like change that. Yeah. Like they didn't smooth it over. And yeah. Anything. Also, they take all this, they, they take the cowboy okay. stuff off of him and he's still just wearing his suit. He's like, I remember the Alamo. <laughs> That's a great joke. That's one I like a lot more as an adult. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly, I think that's the funniest joke in the movie. It's like as simple as it is. Sometimes the, the simple little things are. Now, this, this is also. Uh, no, this isn't the, the. I love the paging Pee Wee Herman the ADR line. Oh yeah, uh, which is very like they're not even trying to make it like realistic. But this scene's also really funny, you know, memorable too. Oh yeah, I'm trying to use the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Remember back when we had to like go to pay phones? Yes. There was only like certain places where you could call somebody now i think if i remember correctly in like the uh dvd like commentary a large majority of these guys are not actors like they're actual bikers or stuff <laughs> they're like that. yeah they're an actual gang of bikers i guess it's the gang tim burton was in yeah like most of them are like when you see them and they look drunk they're probably drunk but oh, like man. Obviously, the the guys just doing all the lines are actors, but yeah, it's fine. I think this is really their bikes they ruined. <laughs> oh no! Here comes a cameo. I say we hang on and then we kill him. <laughs> Why would you spend your time tattooing him? I say I we let him go. <laughs> There's the cameo. It's Elvira, Mistress of the Night. Oh man, I don't even recognize her without her get up. Yeah. Lawrence Very Fishburne's giving not, biker gang. Up. They're gonna kill the guy. Give me one request. Say, uh, Lawrence Fishburne's not in this, is he? No, no cowboy characters in this. Okay, I'm trying to think of other people that were on the Playhouse. Yeah, I guess that a few more cameos left. The Hollywood stuff. Uh, the older brother from the Wonder Years, Kevin, is in it. Yeah, I haven't seen the Wonder Years since that was like a thing. Miss Yvonne is in this. She's the uh, she's the nun. 
in the nun scene, which we'll get to. Mm-hmm. This is so. This is Pee Wee's last request. I mean, you can it works. Die a happy man. Yeah. Yeah, I think most of those guys in that last shot were actual bikers, and they're actual. Yeah, I think that the people that weren't like talking or like had stuff earlier, I think they're. Yeah, like, that makes sense. They're all wearing sunglasses. They're all just probably had to shoot this eight or nine times and they're like we're not drinking this fake water stuff we're mm-hmm. drinking real beer oh my gosh it's funny seeing like the actual like beers in the background usually in movies it'll just the sign will just be in the on sign says beer yeah stuff like that because they're getting all this free advertising or maybe you know Michelob and Coors and those guys uh all wanted to to give this movie money to get in, you know, advertised to that great PV audience that they're going to have. After a nice time on your bike, why not have a nice ice cold Michelob? And the guy in the red bandana with the glasses, he is there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is gone. Yeah. <laughs> as someone who, who rides a motorcycle if you don't know how to ride it you would never have gotten that far yeah um hey here we're coming up to the oh yeah yeah this is where yeah all right this is where the dream sequence that like sticks out in my mind is also very tim burton and he's still wearing the bow tie i mean he has to I know. I just love the like just the subtle things like that where it's like it's like Superman without the cape, you know. Right. Yeah, this one's creepy. I, the, what creeps me out about this one is that one clown that's constantly like changing his face and expression as he's staring directly. That guy right there. Oh my god. He's just staring directly at the camera. Well, all right. So I already had there like. He I, oh my god. He, ho, ha, he. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's something out of Beetlejuice. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, the contrast and, like, surreal stuff. Like, I always had, like, a thing with doctors and whatnot. So, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, medical stuff always freaks me out. And, like, oh, God. Like, why are they even clowns? I guess it's, like... Oh, it ties know, back like, to the... Uh... To, yeah, to the thing in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, God. I also love the clock in the background because I remember clocks having that like neon light in them. Mm-hmm. A friend of mine growing up had one in his house, and I just remembered it. Like I see, I associate that more with like restaurants. I don't know anyone that had that at home. Right. Well, yeah. Like you go to Pizza Hut and yeah, put in your uh, book club Pe- stuff. Well, Pizza Hut had the best sign because it was one that said "Always, it's always time for pizza." Always. Time. Oh no. So good. Francis. Later he he was in Teen Wolf. Francis? Yeah, he was he he played on the basketball team with Michael Jakey or Michael J. Fox. That's oh, so a Teen Wolf. Yeah, that's the first one. Teen Wolf 2 is the one where he's a boxer, right? Yeah, that's the one, and that's... Uh, oh, who's this kid? That's the kid from uh, Wonder Years. Okay. What else is he in, though? Oh, I don't know. I, I so barely remember the Wonder Years. Good old Warner Brothers. You don't see enough movies add in, like, being on the set. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about cameos earlier. I remember how the, the Godzilla one happened now. Oh, duh. Yeah. Because he goes to the movie studio. So I guess, you know, he's back in California. Yeah. Nice milk and barrel. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a, a precursor to, you know, I guess they associate people with cameos and stuff mostly because of the, um, the, the holiday special. Oh, man. Which I know is like your favorite thing in the world. I love the holiday special because it's so bizarre. Yeah, it's so weird. Yeah, I always wanted to visit like movie studios and stuff. 
There we go. This that is Chombi. Okay. Now that I see his face, I'm like, yeah, that's Chombi. I can see it now, but I, I if you didn't tell me, I wouldn't put it together. Yeah. You just have to imagine, you know, like green. Take a look at Hein Mikahinia. Oh, so here comes Miss Yvonne. Yeah, she's the main head head nun actress in this. But yeah, the Christmas special is like oh cameo central and it's just so weird and bizarre that it's just it's magical yeah just like the season oh man you got little richard on ice skates you got magic johnson inside magic screen Mm -hmm. because that's his cousin right it's his cousin which i loved (laughs) brilliant it's got annette funicello and frankie avalon from like they did a movie together with mm-hmm. Pee-wee, or Pee-wee sings like uh, that bird song, you know, bird, 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 bird is the word. I See, get I back at the beach, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. You know, I never, I always assume that song's called like the bird or the bird's the word or something. I'm not even sure what the name of that song is. It might be bird is the, it probably is bird is the word. Yeah. I don't know why, but I always associate the song Tequila with Pee Wee. Like between him and the Ninja Turtles, because you know there's a scene where they're dancing to that in their first movie. That's just that whole bar scene. I mean, that's yeah. As a kid, that would be like the first time I think most most kids our age would have ever heard the song Tequila. Yeah. I'll say. I'm going to start a paper out right now. <laughs> I just love like no one reacts. Wait. Yeah. Is this this one doesn't set doesn't encourage uh, in, uh, improvisation. So I always think he's going to do like a flying nun thing there with the oh, habit. That'd be great. Yeah. But that's like that's a really dated reference even then. True. Because who was the flying nun? Sally Field. Who, Sally Field, yes. Yeah. That was like what the sixties. Yeah. Yeah. It was like after or before she did Gidget. It was about the Gidget time, yeah. And then that's why that was her big breakout stuff. And then she's one of those actors that's in like everything. Yeah. But you know, Pee Wee's got his bike. We need more movies that have the understanding that it's on a film set and you use the film set. Yeah, like uh, Blazing Saddles does it. Yeah. I know the Muppets do stuff like where they read the script. I love the Blazing Saddles one because it's so weird, but. I remember the first time I saw Blazing Saddles, I just did not understand. I just didn't understand what they were doing. Yeah. Um, and now as an adult, like I've also seen it like five million times. Like, I think it's amazing. Just that break right off into the sunset, get into the car, <laughs> yeah. go to the movie theater to get them. I appreciate a good fourth wall break. I mean, right. That one's like fourth wall demo- like demolition. But yeah. So much of the movie takes place at the studio. Yeah. Like the back lot. But like. This is a great gag. Very, you know, this, this movie operates on cartoon logic. This is, you know, a very like wily coyote kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. Especially this whole like scenes and everything. Just everything about yeah. it. The crazy, you know, crashes, yeah. the gags. And, you know, Warner Brothers, they own, you know, the Looney Tunes. So that makes sense. Yeah. Speaking of Gidget, surf's up. Yeah. I just like the idea that the guy crashes and like, I'm going to get into this boat. Yeah. I mean, it is funny watching that like happen now. And why are those kids over. still like holding on to the. Because uh... they are, de- they are uh, method actors, <laughs> dedicated to their craft. Yeah. Oh, 
I mean, I think it is great that stuff from like the sets keep like get involved in the chase. Yeah. Classic little speed up of the camera. Oh, that's always funny. You know, that's one of the reasons I loved the monsters as a kid. Here we go. There's Godzilla. And King Ghidorah. And like really cheap looking versions of those characters. I like that the, the subtitles just said speaking in a foreign language, not even Japanese. I wonder how much that stuff costs because they don't even, you know, they film those movies at Toho Studios in Japan. Right. We didn't get American Godzilla productions. I think the 90s because I think that Charles Barkley commercial was made in the 90s. But yeah. But like, you know, we didn't, we never got really American Godzilla movies with like costumes. You know, it's all CG. But other than that image is just Godzilla hanging out with Santa. Right. Twisted sister. Yeah, man. Now, anytime I hear this song, I have to listen to the whole entire song. (laughs) I can't sell his face. (laughs) It's so messed up. I think, you know what? I think I was talking to someone about this. In the song... It's called Burn in Hell. If you listen to it, when it gets to the part in this movie, you mm. can, like, I swear you can hear, like, a ringing of a, of a like, bicycle bell. Really? Yeah. So, like, I honestly think they, like, the recording caught Pee Wee's bike. I don't know. It's, it's weird to hear, but, like, I have I to listen gonna, to it. Yeah, say we'll have to listen to it next time we're at work together. We'll listen to it on the... Uh, yeah. No, no. Oh, the wheelies earlier, you know? Because <laughs> you got to know it's from the 80s. Radical. <laughs> chicka chicka. <laughs> um... Yeah, this part that part reminds me a little bit of Ferris Bueller. Oh yeah, this is also I love the pet shop gag. But it's, I like that you know uh, Pee Wee gets his bike and he's essentially like a superhero now. You know he's flying around, he's got all these like abilities and things. He's saving saving pets. So like I only feel like this song goes on for like. A little longer than it needs to. Also, why does this pet store have, have a, a chimpanzee? Yeah, and like why? Why? So he can help uh, open up all the cages. Yeah, no, those things are like incredibly illegal to own. Yep. Because <laughs> you know when they like go through puberty, they like chimps are like a million times stronger than us, and uh, you know you hear all these stories about people that have pet chimps and then they go crazy and like chew their faces off and stuff because they're psychotic. But look how cute it is with the little dog. It's just such a crazy part. <laughs> like we just saved all these animals and it's just so weird. So how did the fire start? Where are the people like this is yeah. uh, But it's not so bad. Like the movies I always like, there's always parts where I feel like I skip. This I don't really skip. Yeah. Um, I sometimes skip like the uh, the Tour de France stuff in the beginning, mm-hmm. and I just go right to when he's waking up. Yeah. Just I like mean, in uh, Wonka, I tend to skip uh, Cheer Up Charlie. Oh, I always forget that that part exists. I can't. It's just like it doesn't fit the movie at all, but that's for another discussion. I mean, dude, I we, we mentioned Willy Wonka earlier. I love that movie. As do I. Yeah, As one, do of, I. one of my, one of my favorite. favorites. Yeah. I will. Uh, like I said I, in the beginning, I have a lot of movies that I I really like, but there's like a few movies that I can watch. Like I don't like. There's movies that I like, but I, you have to be like in the mood to watch. Yeah. Like I like The Godfather and like Goodfellas and stuff, but you gotta be in the mood to watch. The yeah, Godfather. They're also like a time commitment too, you know. Right. 
it's like I love watching the good, the bad, the ugly, but like you said, do I have three hours to like sit to watch a movie? No. I, like, I do love the good, bad, the ugly as well. But like Pee Wee, it's 90 minutes. It goes by relatively quick. Wonka, it's about the same. It goes by relatively quick. It reminds me of being a kid. Like they're and they're genuinely entertaining. It's not like because uh, uh, one of the things you know when you get older, like oh yeah, you kind of rediscover things that you like as a kid. Like wow, this is bad. Yeah, you know there. But some things you find are like you like even more now. Like I like Batman the animated series more now as an adult. Oh and yeah, I, you know not that I disliked it as a kid because I did really like it as a kid. But like you know, going back to like the Ninja Turtles cartoon, like this sucks. You know, like as an, like you know looking at it as an adult. Oh yeah. You know, Pee Wee still holds up. How come that's that part's not like the the predator meme? It's a, I don't know. <laughs> no premiere. Oh no, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. It's, we're gonna start the movie all over again now. You know what's cool? Like drive-ins are kind of back again. Yeah. You know that's one of the nice thing. You know, one of the few cool things about COVID is like, oh yeah, because you can go to the movie theaters and like you know since you're in your own cars. Everyone's yeah, added that little. Yeah, I've been to a few. Uh, my family's from outside of like the Pittsburgh area, and they still have it. Much like how here still has one at uh, you know, Delsey. But yeah. like, I I haven't gone in a. I mean, I haven't been back to that area, which I call going back home in a long time. But mm-hmm. uh, I think my favorite one I ever saw, I watched uh. Two for one kind of deal. What you do in the drive through? It was a. Uh, it started with the Flintstones movie. Yeah, a classic. The classic, <laughs> and the that was the the starter. But the feature, the main feature movie was a uh, Jurassic Park. <laughs> I mean, both dinosaur movies, you know, of similar quality. Mm-hmm. But seeing Jurassic Park on the big screen was awesome. Yeah, uh, Jurassic Park. I've seen in theaters so many times. Mm. But I've also seen Dick Tracy on the big screen, so that was yeah. good. God, this is, this is great. <laughs> Morgan Fairchild. James James Brolin. Yeah. Good old Josh Brolin's dad. Mm-hmm. From uh, Goonies fame. And I love, but I love his other... version of Pee Wee. It's great. Yeah. PW. <laughs> yeah. I want a movie. I want Pee Wee's Big Adventure, but I want this Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Like, I, wish I want someone to remake a DVD extra, like just just, just like a uh, Netflix can make this version of Pee Wee's Big Adventure, where he's like a spy and has the microfilm and the you know the the bike and stuff. Oh, yeah, dear. yeah, that would be great. Who would be like the modern actor, you know, equivalent that you would use to play, like, have him like Chris Evans? Uh, I get, I mean, yeah. that's probably a safe bet. Like, I can't think of anyone else. Like, I mean, I think he'd be, he'd have the presence of mind of like being able to like do the comedy stuff as well. Yeah. Add the little uh, subtleness of, of it. and of course, Pee Wee would still play the role that he's about to play right here. This would yeah. still be played by Paul Rubens. Yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh, this is so good. So uncomfortable. <laughs> no, nothing right now, Mr. Herman. You know, it, it, you know, it's harder to act like, like you're a bad actor than it is like people think it is oh yeah like because you gotta play a character who's like you know like him looking at the camera real quick there like there's a lot of little subtle things like again to talk about ghostbusters like when they're doing their commercial like you can see them looking for their marks and stuff and that kind of little stuff is what sells it oh yeah oh i love it it's just so oh (laughs) missy mickey Now I just want to watch PV stuff for the rest of the night. Uh, I'm going to go to bed after this. <laughs> um, but you listening at home can watch PV as much as you want. Yeah, feel free and you know, 
Paging Mr. Herman. <laughs> you have a call for you at the front desk. Because he looks at the camera again real quick. Yeah. This part's great too with the whole like he's in the scene. Doesn't look on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Just sits and stares. Yeah. There's that subtle look at this camera. Yeah. He doesn't know what to do with his hands. Yeah. As he's trying to get out of the, the frame. Yeah. It's it's just uh, there's like you look go back and watch a movie you've seen a hundred times and you see other like you you see things you haven't seen in a while and you're like wow. That little yeah. part so good. Yeah, like some of these movies, like I'm looking for like little details. Like I look for like continuity errors and things. Like in Jurassic Park, there's a, a couple of really big ones. Right. Um, there's parts in like Back to the Future when the they're doing the the band thing at the dance. Where like the amps on a uh, on like a Coca Cola uh, crate, and then it's not, and then it is again when he kicks it back right. over. Stuff like that. Like I like not that I'm looking for reasons to like find like nitpicks or whatever but like it's, it's interesting to see this stuff and you start to think about like why you don't your brain doesn't notice the stuff you know until you go looking for things oh right you know because ultimately that stuff's not important there he is mm-hmm. Phil Hartman oh, yeah so he's in so few movies and stuff But yeah, if you guys are listening and watching, uh, put in the comments some of your uh, favorite lines from the movie or memories you have with the movie. Yeah, or Pee Wee in general, you know. Yeah. Like I said, more of my memories, at least my childhood memories, come from the show. Oh, as, yeah. a, as an adult, I appreciate this more. The show is just like, watching it now, it's just like random nonsense. Yeah. I, I find it hard to sit through. Uh like more than one episode at a time, <laughs> more than one episode at a time now. But like, but like this, is, this is good. It gives you a lot of that same stuff. Um, but you know, it, it's 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 an, it it goes down smoother. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, the 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 uh, TV show is definitely like bizarre to be bizarre. Like, there's a whole part where it shows a dog eating food, like two inches away from its face for a good couple minutes. Mm-hmm. Like it's just weird, but like that, like like you said, that is the connection I think a large majority of people have to Pee Wee Herman because it was on all the time, so memories are there, and that's why I think the Christmas special rings so true to me because it's it's what I remember. I remember watching it as a kid. Here's the movie, yay! Yeah. Again, Pee Wee Herman as himself. As himself. Ah man, yeah, it's a good movie. And it moves relatively like, yeah, like like I said, it, it it the first third always feels longer than when I watch it. But like once it gets going, you know, it it you fly through it. Yeah, I always like, but I like the beginning part because that's like to me that's where the most memorable kind of like little subtle things like you know they, oh yes, that's me. They call me Chuck is from and all that kind of stuff. It's just. I don't know. It's my. It's one of my favorites. I just can watch it over and over again. I love, mm-hmm. I love the music with it. Uh, you know, Danny Elfman, from Oingo Boingo fame, of course. Boy, well, now, uh, well, man, now he's really only known for Oingo Boingo. Do you know if this is his first, uh, first I, movie? I don't know. I know he's. I mean, he's done like nine hundred things with, you know. I mean, he's also, yeah, he's just done so many movies in general. Yeah, I think he's been starting to put. Uh, oh, he's also got. Action. So he's also got a Phil Hartman connection because he did the theme for The Simpsons. There you go. Yeah. And I, I think he's still putting out stuff now. Oh like, yeah, he I, definitely is. I think he just started putting some things out recently, like um, which is weird. But uh, trying to trying to look it up, get the actual. Uh, I don't know. It's no real easy. Okay, here we go. He was on the Gong Show. But he did, I mean, Danny Elfman's music is in a lot of stuff, so. 
but a lot yeah. of, you know, Tim Burton collections. So, yeah. But, oh, uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, listen to this helped you appreciate the movie a little bit, you know, at least from our perspectives. Um, as I said, Joey, like, I, this is the movie I associate with you the most. Yeah, I can, I can see that. It is a, it's a movie that I don't need to watch to have. You can tell me a part in the movie and I would just know exactly where we're at, where we're at and don't need to see it. It's so ingrained in my brain, so. Yeah, and this is a, a movie, I don't think it's the recognition it necessarily it, it, it deserves, but I don't think it's like forgotten. Um, but, you know, hopefully this helps you appreciate it a little bit more and thank you for watching the movie with us. Yeah. Um, you know, we're going to do more of these as we go. If you have suggestions for movies you want to do, um, you know, let us know. Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll uh, we'll see you guys later. Right. Bye, everybody. Have a good night.